Your Voice, Shropshire Disability Network Newsletter, February 2012. Part 3 Spartacus Inspires a Sermon These are extracts from a sermon preached at the West London Synagogue by Rabbi Debbie Young Summers about responsible reform. Our limitations are often placed on us by the world we live in, but it is not uncommon for us to place limitations on ourselves through our own fear and doubt. Moses demonstrates this perfectly, trying to convince God that he really can't do the task he's been called to. He has a speech impediment. If we are all given the right encouragement and guidelines, and perhaps more importantly, resources, just as Moses is by God, we can overcome much that life has thrown at us. There's the obvious quote from Leviticus, You shall not insult the deaf or place a stumbling block before the blind, 1914. But there are other imperatives too. One of my favourites comes from Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 5, talking about the temple. For my house shall be a house of prayer for all people. We need to not just enable, but ensure our houses of worship and the world around us is open to all, not just those we see. In starting to think about these issues, I sent a Twitter message to a tweeter known as at Bendigirl, who I and have learned a huge amount from. She suffers from a condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and blogs, in her own words, about the highs and lows of life lived with joints that dislocate as frequently as the British weather changes. To leave that in an electric wheelchair, however, to qualify for one on the NHS, you have to be wheelchair-bound in your own home for six months. At home, it is good for her health to move as much as possible, so in walking at home, she is precluding her opportunity to leave the house. She was incredibly helpful and suggested in response to my unsolicited online message that I just give her a call, which I did. It is clear that our responsibility, Jewish or otherwise, to support the vulnerable in our society is not going well. Proving you need the benefits is becoming harder and harder, with those who are wheelchair-bound, likely in the new benefits which will replace the DLA to be qualified as able to work as well as you or me, as long as they can propel the chair themselves. I was struck by something Bendigil, whose real name is Kayla, said. In Nazi Germany, well before there were Jewish pogroms and camps, disabled and mentally ill German citizens were rounded up, and it was for them that camps were initially developed. And how were the rest of the population convinced this was OK? They were told that these people were an economic drain on the nation. Increasingly, as Kalia sees it, our media has been spearheading a campaign to convince us that the disabled are workshy benefit sheets. In fact, only half a percent of all disabled claimants have been found to be fraudulent, and yet to combat these false claims, benefits are being cut by, at the most optimistic estimate, 20%. Deuteronomy chapter 15, 7 says, If there be among you a needy person, you shall not harden your heart, but you shall find surely open your hand. Disability campaigners are, on the whole, themselves, physically struggling, sick and isolated. Moses' inability to express himself clearly is a useful metaphor for this. He had a brother, Aaron, to help him along the way, and he became the greatest leader of the Israelites. With this kind of support, three defeats against the Welfare Reform Bill were achieved in the House of Lords. Yet these cuts have been happening for a while, and will continue if more isn't said and done. What I hear, particularly on the web, where the housebound often have their only outlet, is that people aren't making enough noise about this. We need to support those that we can, and be the voice for those who can't raise theirs up loud enough. Even if this doesn't affect you directly, it is still our responsibility to speak up for others. We all have unique skills and abilities, as well as challenges and disabilities. I must confess, as a sister of someone with special needs, I am angry at what is potentially being both lost in care and in human dignity. But as a Jew and as a British citizen who knows we can do better, I am angrier and I want us all to lift up our voices in remembrance of Moses who couldn't. May this be God's will. Amen. Benefits Appeal System is near collapse. Thousands of ill and disabled people have become trapped in a revolving door of medical assessments and appeals at a cost of £80 million with many claimants on their second and third attempts to overturn rulings that remove their benefits. The government's drive to cut Britain's multi-billion pound welfare bill by moving long-term unemployed people off sickness benefit and into work is at risk of descending into chaos, according to the Channel 4 News investigation. 
the Work Capability Assessment Programme, which assesses benefit claimants to see whether they are fit for work, is teetering on the brink of collapse as the system becomes clogged up with appeals. Ministers introduce more stringent medical tests as part of welfare reforms designed to cut the number of people claiming incapacity benefits, which is currently at 2.4 million. They say sickness benefits are too often abused as an excuse for being out of work and have pledged to end what they call the something-for-nothing culture. But the number of appeals by claimants who believe they have been incorrectly assessed as medically able to work has quadrupled in two years and is expected to reach the 240,000 mark this year. In one case uncovered by Channel 4, a woman placed on benefits after being diagnosed with a musculoskeletal problems was declared as capable for work, having been given zero points at her work capability assessment medical test. Her appeal found she was incapable of working for health reasons, and as a result her benefit was reinstated, but the process took so long that she faced another assessment which found her fit for work. She is now appealing against that decision. The logjam in the appeal system has meant that even claimants who lose their appeal against being declared fit for work are not being directed to the jobs market. Because the appeals process can take more than six months, many claimants deemed medically able to work are entitled to make a new claim for sickness benefit. Channel 4 News spoke to 30 citizens advice and legal advice centres. All reported that they had clients on their second or third appeal. Many described the system as close to meltdown and one said it was teetering on the brink of collapse. The tribunal service that hears incapacity benefit appeals is overstretched, with some sitting on Saturdays to try and keep on top of demand, and the cost of running the tribunals over the last two years has been £80 million, according to official estimates, with that figure expected to rise. A Department of Work and Pension spokesperson said, Welfare reform will ensure people no longer get written off to a life on benefits. Appeals increase whenever an appeal like ESA whenever a benefit like ESA is introduced. That is why we are working to ensure that problems can be dealt with so they do not unnecessarily proceed to a tribunal. We are also continuously improving the work capability assessment to ensure that it is fair and effective as possible, bringing in changes recommended by Professor Harrington. Social Media Guide Updated American non-profit software information provider Idealware has updated its non-profit social media decision guide which looks at the various tools available, examines what you might want to achieve with social media, integration and a workbook. The new edition has additional sections on goals and strategies and information about using social media for advocacy and fundraising. For more information on social media within the VCS and how it can help your organisation, please visit www.idealware.org forward slash reports forward slash non profits social media dash decision dash guide question mark key four nine two six six nine seven eight and do a quick registration to receive the report. It is well worth doing. Sensory Impairment Shropshire www.sensoryimpairment.org.uk The website for the sensory impaired, deaf, hard of hearing and low vision. Lots of interesting and informative pages. We need your help. Loop systems in Shropshire. Please go to the website and tell us where you find the loop systems. Let us know about the loop systems in the county. We will form a catalogue of loop systems and their working state. You can contact us at don at condover.net. Shropshire Mum Hits Back at the Prime Minister's Tourette's Sneer David Cameron's joke comparing Shadow Chancellor Ed Balls to someone who suffers from Tourette's has been widely criticised. The gaffe was made during an interview with the Sunday Telegraph in which Mr Cameron said of Mr Balls, He just annoys me, but I'm very bad, in the House of Commons at not getting distracted, and the endless ceaseless banter, it's like having someone with Tourette's permanently sitting opposite you. The Prime Minister was quick to distance himself from the remark, stating that he was speaking off the cuff. But Nikki Clark from the Shropshire Cares campaign, a mother of two disabled daughters, was unhappy with the comments. Comments like this compound the myths and the stereotypes surrounding people with Tourette's, she said. Mrs Clark was equally dismayed by the PM's non-apology. 
I don't believe he was speaking off the cuff. It was a recorded interview and the Prime Minister doesn't make comments off the cuff. Does cruel remarks show Cameron's real attitude to disability? David Cameron's casually cruel remark about Tourette's in his interview with the Sunday Telegraph speaks volumes about his attitude to disability as a whole and it makes you wonder if some deep psychological issue is driving his remorseless campaign to make people with disabilities suffer. The amount of money to be saved for the national purse through benefit reforms such as seeking to destroy disability living allowance is derisory as a percentage of what we are told is needed. But the suffering and heartache being caused is enormous. Cameron knows this. He has to. It is blindingly obvious. Even the Daily Mail's website thinks he's going too far. So what did he say? Referring to Shadow Chancellor Ed Balls, the Prime Minister said, He just annoys me, but I'm very bad in the House of Commons at not getting distracted, and the endless ceaseless banter is like having someone with Tourette's permanently sitting opposite you. This was not just cruel, it trivialised a condition that afflicts many and can cause great family distress. The apology that followed was nothing of the sort. It was at first a grudging sorry I got found out statement issued by his office, but later on the Andrew Marr show on BBC One, Cameron actually had to say out loud that he was sorry. What does it say about our politics when the Prime Minister thinks it's all right to use language you would expect from school bullies? He knows from first-hand experience about the distress that disability can bring to a family, so why, why be so callous? Is this comment a glimpse into the mindset of a man who blames people with disabilities just for existing? Children's Hospital website success NHS Local and Birmingham Children's Hospital have created a website for children and their parents that moves beyond just providing information. It also includes a section in which children can upload their stories and share experiences. In the longer term, the hospital aims to create a genuine interaction between patients and staff through its new site. Deaf Club members praise Shrewsbury Theatre. Members of Shrewsbury Deaf Club are full of praise for Shrewsbury Theatre 7. At the December open meeting of Shropshire Disability Network, they said what a pleasure it had been to attend signed performances. One of the members said, Going to Shrewsbury's Theatre 7 is brilliant. We are always treated as equals by them and we love that. All members of the Deaf Club were full of praise for the Riverside Theatre and recommended that hearing impaired people check out the programme for BSL, Interpreted Performances. Theatre 7 is committed to increasing the number of sign language interpreted performances by working with companies which include SLI as an integral part of their productions. The theatre said, we always promote an SLI performance within our pantomime season. See our brochure for further details or inquire at the box office when booking your tickets. The theatre is now offering some captioned performances for deaf, deafened and hard of hearing patrons delivered by stage text. Captions are similar to TV subtitles and the actor's words appear on the LED display unit placed near the stage or in the set. Character names, sound effects and off-stage noises are also given. To contact the box office, call 01743 281 281 where you can email mail at theatre7.co.uk. Legal aid cuts loom for the disabled. Concerns over government plans to cut legal aid for disabled people have been expressed by 23 organisations, including MCAP, MENCAP, RNIB, Leonard Cheshire, Scope and Mind. These organisations want to see an amendment put forward by Lib Dem Tom Brake included in the Legal Aid and Sentencing Bill. Charities argue that if ministers restrict legal aid for disabled people wanting to challenge benefit decisions, they will be limiting access to help in England and Wales which could harm vulnerable people. Campaigners also say that those affected would not be able to receive legal help elsewhere, causing a serious impact on their finances and peace of mind, which in turn could make it harder to return to work in the future. Sarah Starkey Telford Parents Group discusses additional needs services. Parents Opening Doors, aka PODS, is an independent parents forum for improving the lives of families who have a child or an with an additional need or disability. 
Based in Telford, Pods recently held a discussion on the Telford and Rekin Service Review and the Children's Specialist Services, such as Stepping Stones, Disabled Children's Team, Children's Centres, Family Connect, Education, Social Care and Health. Pods' address is PO Box 772, Telford, Shropshire, TF7 9FD and their website is www.podstalford.org. Grant Giving Trust's website. If you need to identify potential funders, there are a number of free resources available to help you in your search. For instance, Grant Makers, an interactive database of worldwide grant makers. The database currently includes over 6,000 entries of grant makers, either nationally or internationally. To make use of this tool, please see www.grantmakersonline.com. Health Boards Disappear in Merger The regional health boards of Shropshire, Telford and Rekin, Worcester and Herefordshire are being merged into NHS West Mercia Cluster Board. The new setup is a temporary measure until power is devolved to clinical commissioning groups of GPs who will take over NHS budgets on the 31st of March 2013. Dismay has been expressed at the expected loss of local focus and jobs. Audit Office slams long-term policy failures. Outcomes for people with long-term neurological conditions have stalled or deteriorated six years on from key policy to improve support and despite significantly increased funding for care. That is the message from the National Audit Office in a report which says that 2005 National Service Framework for Long-Term Conditions has been poorly implemented and lacked clear leadership, coordination, appropriate accountability, structures and monitoring information. The NAO concludes that many of the problems identified by the framework still remain, including poor information and advice for patients and carers, poor coordination between health and social care and a postcode lottery in care. This is despite a 38% real terms increase in NHS spending on neurological conditions from 2006-07 to 2009-10. While there has been some improvements, for instance reduced waiting times for inpatient and outpatient neuro neurology services, other indicators had deteriorated. For example, emergency neurological admissions to hospital rose by 31% from 2004-05 to 2009-10 compared with a 20% rise in emergency emissions overall. Services for people with long-term neurological conditions are not as good as they ought to be, despite a large increase in spending, said Am uh, Amias Morse, head of the National Audit Office. Progress in implementing the department's strategy has been poor, and local organisations lack incentives to improve quality of services. The NAO says the Department of Health did not put in place arrangements for monitoring the implementation of the framework and was thus unable to hold primary care trusts and councils accountable for delivering on it. The government had cancelled a review of the framework agreed by its Labour predecessor, so it was not clear how lessons would be learnt to inform future work on long-term conditions. Dementia Care Slammed a significant improvement is needed in the way hospitals care for patients with dementia, according to a new report. The National Audit of Dementia looked at 210 hospitals in England and Wales and surveyed 2,211 staff. Just 32% of staff said they had sufficient training in dementia care. According to the Alzheimer's Society, the number of patients with dementia in the UK is expected to increase from 700. 50,000 uh, to a million by 2021. Currently a quarter of all hospital beds are occupied by dementia sufferers. The report makes several recommendations for improvement in treatment. One of the authors, Dr Mike Crawford, said, The first thing we need to, for all our staff working on general medical wards to get basic training in dementia and each ward should have at least one member who's had a higher level of training. The people who run the hospitals also need to make sure that the staff have resources to manage and help people with dementia and need to make changes to the environment in which people are cared for so that they have things like familiar objects. Dr Peter Carter from the Royal College of Nursing said, It's about time the government took 
took this report, along with many others before, and insisted that there is action taken to address the issue. The Department of Health said, We will be financially rewarding hospitals that identify patients at risk and refer them for specialist care. Financial abuse of sufferers is rife. Social care professionals have been urged to watch for indicators of financial abuse among dementia sufferers after the Alzheimer's Society warned that the problem was rife. Some 15% of carers polled by the charity said the person they cared for had been financially abused, while 62% said their loved one had been targeted by unsolicited or unscrupulous cold callers or salespeople. In a report called Short Changed, the Alzheimer's Society says people with dementia are at risk an increased risk because of isolation, reduced capacity to assess financial risk and reliance on others to manage their money. This was exacerbated by problems in the financial system, including lack of awareness among banking staff of the signs of dementia and of the Mental Capacity Act 2005, which enables people to manage money on behalf of loved ones and a lasting power of attorney. It also said that the rise of chip and pin, online banking and other personal banking systems that required customers to remember passwords and codes risked increasing financial exclusion for people with dementia. The report said social workers and other professionals needed to be aware of the increased risks of financial abuse facing people with dementia and the warning signs. Alzheimer's Society staff and social care coordinators interviewed for the report identified the following risk factors. Significant or sudden changes in a person's behaviour or living circumstances. Unpaid bills. New interest or involvement from a third party in a person with dementia. The person with dementia showing confusion about the value of money or the bill paying process. Family members moving into the person's home and taking control of financial issues. It also said that the financial abuse needed to have a much higher profile in local authority safeguarding procedures citing research that it was often seen by counsellors secondary to other forms of abuse. Disability Charities Unite Disability Alliance, the National Centre for Independent Living and RADAR joined forces to form Disability Rights UK on the 1st of January. The new charity, Disability Rights UK, will be led, run and controlled by disabled people with disabled people making up at least three quarters of its board members. Disability Rights UK, promoting disabled people's leadership and control, breaking the link between disability and poverty, and campaigning for disability, equality and human rights. Antibiotic attitudes. The Health Protection Agency has published the results of research into people's attitudes towards antibiotics. Over half of the 1,700 people interviewed who had contacted a doctor or nurse, 53%, went expecting antibiotic treatment, and 25% of those who responded said they believed that antibiotics work on most coughs and colds. However, 70% recognised that antibiotic resistance is a problem in hospitals, and a similar number acknowledged that resistance to antibiotics could affect them and their family. <laughs>